Oh, hi, welcome back. You caught me cooking breakfast. And if you watched Holiday Baking Championship this week, you saw the bakers' faces light up with the secret ingredient of bacon. So I thought, why not go on a breakfast dessert adventure? I am Zach Young, and let's get cooking. So I'm gonna start by cooking my bacon. I have eight slices of bacon, which are chopped. I'm cooking them on the stove. Ah, oh, oh, bacon sizzle. I already chopped the bacon, and what that's going to do is allow the bacon to cook in its own fat. This is the secret to getting crispy bacon on the stove. You can cut it into little pieces. Oh, yes. This is what I'm talking about. This bacon is golden brown. We'll uh, take our beautifully crispy bacon onto a paper towel just to get some of the extra grease off. And speaking of grease, you know, my grandmother always told me that, you know, you can't throw out the grease. So there's always that little tub of grease in the fridge or freezer. We're actually gonna use that. So I'm gonna take this grease, pop it in the freezer, and we're going to use it to make Drum roll, please. <laughs> Maple bacon scones. We are solving the debate of savory versus sweet for breakfast. Maple and the salty bacon go so, so well together. So we'll start with two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, to which we'll add half a cup of maple sugar. So maple sugar is basically maple syrup that has been boiled and boiled and boiled until there's basically no water in it, and then it crystallizes to make this delicious sugar. You can use maple sugar as a substitute in baking. Uh, you can use it, it's great for like frostings and icings. Here it's gonna give us delicious maple flavor to go with our bacon. I'm going to zest an orange in here, and orange, maple, and bacon for me, that's like a trifecta. You know, the orange is like the little cheerleader for this scone. It kind of ties everyone together, gives a little bit of acidity to the scone, a little bit of brightness to the scone, because it is salty and sweet, right? We want to bring some brightness to this party. Save that orange. We have two and a half teaspoons of baking powder, teaspoon of kosher salt, and whisk that all together back to our orange, cut our orange in half, and we'll put half of the juice in a bowl for later. Don't drink it yet. We need it later in the recipe. I know, fresh squeezed orange juice. It's a thing. So this we'll save for later, and then we have half a cup of whole milk, which we'll squeeze the rest of the orange into. And what we're doing here is we're making our own buttermilk. The acid from the orange juice is going to curdle the milk, give some acidity. The acid will react with the baking powder, get nice and light and fluffy in our scone. So put that to the side. It's going to curdle, all right? If it looks wrong, you're doing something right. So, fat. How could I forget fat? <laughs> we're baking. <laughs> so I have four tablespoons of unsalted butter, chilled. Very important that this stay cold. So we're cutting our butter into little teeny tiny pea-sized portions. So now we'll take our bacon fat out of the freezer. If you're using your can of bacon fat, measure a quarter of a cup. But these uh, eight strips of bacon yield just about that. You want the bacon fat to be cold. Cold fat in scones, in biscuits, in pie crust. That means flaky and delicious. And now, dealer's choice. You can use your hands. You can use your uh, grandmother's pastry blender. I'm gonna do my hands. I always do my hands. Pastry blender's great. Thanks, Grandma. So I'm breaking my butter and my bacon fat in here, and I wanna get it to be these small pea-sized pieces. You don't wanna overwork it. You wanna still see pieces of bacon fat and butter. So this like half and half bacon fat and butter mixture is interesting. You can do a lot with it. You can use it in a pie crust, right? If the recipe calls for, say, two sticks of butter, use half of that as bacon fat. So play with your baking, you know? Play with your bacon and play with your baking. Put bacon in your bacon. All right, and now, 
We'll go with the star of the show, our bacon. We'll crumble in all but a quarter cup of this bacon. And even though we already cut it, I like to give it a little crunch crunch in my hands just to break it up into slightly smaller pieces. You want a nice salty pop, but you don't want to get, you know, a whole pig in your scone. So we'll mix that in. And finally, let's add our liquid. We have our homemade buttermilk. We'll add one large egg to that. Give it a little mix. And we'll add our wet to our dry, gently bringing it together. You don't want to overwork it at this point too. You want to keep it almost crumbly, just so it barely holds its shape. Just barely coming together. That is what you want in a scone. You know, good scones are kind of like my dating life. You know, you, you want to find something that can barely hold it together. You're welcome. So you can see it, it looks dry, but that's exactly what you want. We'll press our scone into a three quarter inch thick round. No need to get the measuring taper ruler out. You can do it by eye. It's a scone, all right? And we'll cut this into eight pieces. And I just cut it like a pizza. Again, these bench scrapers, love them. You can use a knife, a dull knife, the back of a knife, they'll cut really well. Laying our scones on a parchment lined baking sheet. And now our remaining bacon, I'm gonna crumble a little bit smaller. And this is where that extra orange juice comes into play. If you made a mimosa out of that orange juice, I do not blame you. You could use milk, cream, buttermilk. It's basically just glue, but we had half of the orange and it'll add a little bit of flavor, so why not use it? But if you drank it, I don't blame you. And I'm a little bit jealous that you are having a mimosa. And now, sprinkle our remaining bacon right on top. Our scones are sprinkled with bacon and are ready to go into the oven 375 degrees for about 20 minutes until they are golden brown. Scones are out of the oven and smelling bacon-tastic. So let's make a glaze. We have a cup of maple sugar and two tablespoons of milk. We just wanna melt this to dissolve the sugar. You can do this quickly on the stove or in the microwave. Okay, so our maple sugar glaze. And now my scones, which have been cooling for about 10 minutes. I put my scones on a glazing rack uh, or a cooling rack that we're gonna use to glaze. I like to do this over a sheet tray just to catch any drips and make cleanup easier. Uh, do I want to dip it or do I want to spoon it? I kind of want to dip. You kind of want to spoon? Oh my God, these decisions. I don't know, I don't know. I'm gonna dip it. So I'm gonna go donut style. Little dip, little wiggle. Oh yes. You want to shake off the excess glaze, but you don't want to be cheap. All right, you want full coverage. And what's gonna happen is this glaze is gonna dribble down a little bit and you'll start to see the little pieces of bacon pop through. This is sexy breakfast. Now, I've gotten a little bit to the bottom of the bowl. So if you don't wanna dip, the other technique here is to spoon and let it kinda do its thing. So, if you have the willpower to wait 20 to 30 minutes, this glaze will harden. It will be delightfully crispy and crackly and sugary on top with the salty bacon below. If you can't wait, I do not blame you because these scones are also delicious warm. I, you know, I am not waiting for these to cool. This is the ultimate breakfast. It is sweet, salty, that orange, that maple glaze, the scone itself is light and fluffy. I am so excited about this bacon breakfast journey. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen. I'm Zach Young. This was another episode of Holiday Baking Championship, extra sweet and salty. Mm -hmm.